Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Um, that comes from Psalm 42. That's kind of the update of where we are right now as a family. We have f found ourselves sort of downcast and um, I'm maybe disappointed in uh, the, the line. We, we, it's kind of my health just slow, keeps slowly kind of uh, slipping down, it seems like, lately. Uh, not feeling very good at all. Um, and, you know, as we're waiting for this call that you guys all know about, um, we got that call previously. I think I told you guys that in maybe episode three. Um, and that was almost a month ago, I think. And it's just been kind of radio silence. Um, and so we are waiting and uh, we have found ourselves struggling in the midst of that wait. Um, we're trying to keep our spirits up. Um, we, we are trying to, uh, yeah, I don't know, just, just be positive and, and keep marching forward and trying to uh, continue to do uh, physical things and, and kind of move forward with life as we wait. We're trying right now to shift from um, putting life completely on hold and waiting for this call. And we're slowly shifting out of that to let's get back to living life and let's allow this call to um, interrupt the life that we're living. Um, yeah, so that's kind of where we're at. Um, and that is the update, no call. Um, kind of radio silence, yeah. Um, so we're gonna try to shift into, hey, let's live life again and let's adjust when that call does come. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's coming as quickly as we thought it was. Um, and, and who knows the reason? Who knows the reason? We've gotten so much more time to pray for this donor and their family and that is just a a great opportunity for all of us to please continue to pray for them. Um, and yeah, so this week I was reading in the book of Psalm and, and it's David in Psalm 42, King David is saying, why my soul are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? And I just took some time to ask myself the same question. Um, what has changed to, to make me feel that way? What, like what's going on? Um, and you know, even just talking with people this week about their own lives and everything, I've realized that like, I'm not alone in that. That is part of being human, I think, is these seasons of this. Um, and so what do we do with those seasons? What, what is, once we recognize kind of the condition of our heart or our soul, um, as being downcast, like, what do we do? How do we prevent ourselves from staying there and just existing there? Because that's not something I want to do. I don't think, I don't want that for you either. Um, and, and I love what David says the very next line. So he says, why my soul are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? And then he sort of rebukes himself and he encourages himself. And he says, put your hope in God. And when I heard that, I had to take a little step back and, and, and realize like, if I am downcast, if I am sorrowful and melancholy or whatever word you want to use, depressed, whatever word, um, and he's saying, hey, put your hope in God. I, I, I sort of realized for myself, and maybe you can think about it on your own for you, because I don't know what, what's going on with you. Um, he says, put your hope in God. And what that did in my brain is that inferred that my hope is probably in something else right now. Um, and as I pondered that and just reflected on that, I, I began to realize my hope has transferred from being in God to being in being uh, this, this transplant and getting healthy and, and getting, you know, feeling better. Um, and I think our, our family, as it's gotten closer, our hope has, has shifted into that. Like, man, let's, 
like John's gonna feel so much better um, and he's gonna be able to do so much more and have more energy and you know um, I think we began hoping and hoping and hoping in that and then when it didn't come or it hasn't come yet um, you know we get we get depressed <laughs> Because that's, that's what we're longing for with all of our heart. And, and David just reminded me in Psalm 42, like, put your hope in God. What is your hope being put in right now? Um, if you're downcast, you're probably hoping in something else. You know, you're probably hoping that, hey, maybe our country will start becoming united and be better. Or, hey, you know, maybe people will be nicer to me. Or, like, who knows what you're putting your hope in. You know, maybe you're hoping for the next presidential election. I don't know. Um, but when we hope in these things that are, I don't know, temporary and they just fade away and, and they don't happen, um, I think that's when we're at danger into slipping into that downcast depression and um, just feeling like, bleh, you know? And that's where I found myself the last few weeks um, as we're waiting. And so now I am, uh, now that I'm aware of it, I'm like, okay, what does it look like then to not hope in this transplant or, or, feel, or even just feeling better, not put my hope in that, but, but to put my hope in God? Um, and, and I was reminded of a passage in Joshua 5. So the Israelites, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to catch you up like the whole Bible up to Joshua real quick. Uh, no, maybe not that. That's too much. <laughs> so you guys have heard of um, the Israelites being slaves in Egypt. And then Moses came and said, you know, let my people go. And they crossed the Red Sea and they wandered around in the desert looking for this promised land that God had uh, promised them. And they wandered around for 40 years you know, and they're putting their hope, I'm assuming, I might be drawing unnecessary parallels, uh, but they're putting this hope in this promised land, you know, and they find themselves discouraged in the wilderness. They find themselves like looking back at the good old days, like, man, I just had food over there, you know, um, in Egypt when I was a slave. Um, but they find themselves just downcast and distraught. And and finally, they're getting ready to cross the Jordan River to go into the Promised Land. And, and as they cross the Jordan River, um, the Ark of the Covenant is taken into the middle of the river. The waters part, you know, just like the Red Sea. And they walk through on dry land. And it says when the last person crossed over in the dry land, that, that God instructed them, Hey, take 12 guys and go back to the middle of the Jordan River and get some big old rocks from the middle of the river. Put them on your shoulder, carry them out, um, and I want you to go pile them up over there on the other side of the river. Um, that way, when you see those things, you remember. You remember what I did. You remember that I brought you from slavery through the wilderness into the promised land. You remember that God always, um, you remember that God always keeps his promises to us, right? And so go pile up those rocks. So every time you see those rocks, you know that, hey, those are from the middle of the river because God parted it and brought us to the promised land. And, and he says, when you see that, remember that. And when your kids ask about that, you tell them what I did and you remember. And, and as I thought about that story, I was like, man, like it's so powerful. Like when I find myself downcast, disturbed, depressed, disappointed, or whatever, what can I do? Put my hope in God. How do I do that? And that story just gave me the insight that maybe I need to look back on my life and rediscover God's faithfulness in my life over the years. Um, I don't remember, or no, I don't remember. I don't know if you guys have seen kind of, uh, I think episode two, where I talked about like, why do I have kidney transplant? Or why do I need a kidney transplant? Why are my kidneys failing? Um, so at the end of that episode, I was just kind of sharing my heart like, hey, I, um, I wasn't really supposed to have the life I have now. Like my kidneys were supposed to go out at, um, my, my kidneys were supposed to fail completely by like adolescence, like puberty type age. Um, and that didn't happen. And I shared like my perspective on that. It's like, man, my life expectancy has already doubled. God has already done that. And I think my mom or I, one of us, shared with you guys that 
you know, because of all of my, the history of my illness and all the infections, all the things I've had in the past, like I wasn't supposed to be able to have kids. Like I didn't think I'd be able to have kids. Uh, and I shared with you, I have four, I have four kids. Um, and, and so I'm, I'm telling you this to say, hey, when I put my hope in God, I can look back and remember the things God has already done in my life. And I can use those things to, to give myself encouragement and courage for the uncertain future. Um, because all of our future is uncertain. Yours, mine, everyone's. Um, but I can look back and see God display His faithfulness over and over and over in my life. And, and so I can take a step back from this despair. <laughs> And I can remember that and I can thank God for that and I can trust God with my future. Um, and so that's kind of where we are at right now. I want my next episode coming out. I just want to get a quick update to you guys that I'm still waiting on a call, doing okay, um, hanging in there. Um, and I'll try to get another video out soon that just, I want to, I want to introduce you to my kids. I want to introduce you to the family um, because those are my rocks from the middle of the Jordan River that I look at and I remember God's faithfulness and I remember the gifts that he's given me and how he's provided for me and my family over the years. So I want to introduce you to them um, on this very next episode. I've been working on it. It's just did, didn't get it done. Uh, but I'm going to introduce you to them next. Um, and I want to encourage you, if you find yourself downcast or disturbed or depressed, just ask yourself, like do some self-reflection and, and try to figure out what it is you're putting your hope in. Um, and is it, are you putting your hope in something that will pretty much guarantee to disappoint you? Um, and, or are you putting your hope in God? And what are some of the things that you need to reflect back on, on God's faithfulness over your life to pull you out of that, to, to again, encourage you, um, and to again, uh, just kind of kind of lift you up so that um, we can remember that every single day is a gift. Even the days where we're down in the dumps, um, God gave us that day. God gave us today, you know, um, and, and today is nothing if not potential. Uh, potential for um, a wonderful day to get to know God a little more, um, to thank God for the things that we're grateful for, to encourage one another uh, as, you know, each of us has our own seasons we're in. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I guess that's my update and my encouragement for you today. Um, let's, let's, let's stop hoping in all these other things and let's do our best to replace our hope in God. Um, and, and what I really had to do is I just had to repent. I said, like, God, you know what? I'm sorry. I didn't realize that I started hoping in something, not you. Like, help me get back over there. Um, and he always does because he's faithful um, and he's good. He's so good. Um, anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Um, feel free to comment if you have any questions. <coughs> sorry. Feel free to comment if you have any questions or concerns or just want to say hey or want to say something encouraging to me. Uh, that go a long way. Um, and if you want um, alerts when these videos are released, go ahead and you can just hit the subscribe button and uh, that should tell you when the new ones are up. So anyways, all right, guys, thank you so much for your prayers, for our family, for the donor and for this whole process. Um, if there's any way we can be praying for you, um, just let us know. We would love to uh, spend the time we've got um, to lift you up in prayer as well. All right, guys. Have an awesome day, night. Thanks for watching. <laughs> I'll see you next time. Later.